Okay, here we go. Let's open our NSP software and get connected here. So first we're gonna go ahead and get the NSP open. Takes a second on this computer. So you'll see it's gonna tell me, hey, there's a dash connected because I'm plugged into the dash currently. Sorry, I didn't do a video of that part of it, but I'm plugged into the dash. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna open the Haltech ICC software and this is the newest version of ICC and you have to make sure you have the newest version and it's gonna give you this option to upgrade to NSP. And you need to close the ESP back behind there. Um, sorry, I opened that to start out with. But you'll see ICC gives you this upgrade to Nexus. So go ahead and hit next and it's gonna copy this firmware to the dash and this takes a pretty decent amount of time. Uh, this is in fast forward here. Um, it takes a good 10 minutes plus the first time you do it. And we're actually gonna have to update this firmware again later, which is a little bit quicker, but it does take a few minutes. So. I think I have this in 12X time. I should have cut it down even more. But as you're, uh, as you're waiting here, um, just remember that you can only do this once, and once you do this, you can't go back. All right, so hit finish once it's done, and it's going to go ahead and open up. It'll automatically open NSP for you. So now that we're in NSP, it's going to connect and this all takes this whole process takes a good 45 minutes to an hour the first time you do it it's a pretty major update so let's go ahead and get connected here and we're still plugged into the dash we're not plugged into the ecu yet So now we have the dash base screens, and this is very similar to how ICC displayed things, except it's in NSP. So the first thing we need to do is correct any of the major errors that are gonna pop up. And the biggest one is that you need to name this device. And this creates a folder in the Nexus uh, file system. It'll be separate from the folder that your Elite 2500 or Nexus R3 or R5 created. So it's a, it's a little bit separate still. Supposedly this will all eventually be integrated together. But so now we're gonna go ahead and update to the newest firmware on the dash. Even though now it's on Nexus firmware, it still needs a newer firmware update because there were some bugs in that original firmware. Um, like the odometer doesn't read right and some other things. So uh, we're gonna fast forward to this one as well. This one takes just like the previous one about 10 minutes and you have to you have to basically just wait it out all right now we have a fun 68 errors um, this is a bug <laughs> and there's there's gonna be bugs they've they've put out the software so quickly that there are quite a few bugs and this current bug that happens when you update to the newest firmware and I've had this maybe yours won't do it but I've had this on every single one of the dashes I've updated recently it's a minimum maximum error so the first thing you do is apply your NSP preferences from the channel configuration and then you'll see you still have errors um, So what you need to do here is you need to tell it in connections and CAN and the Haltech CAN system to enable external IO control. And this is super important. If you don't do that step, then the ECU won't be able to actually see and manage this dash. So once you've done that, it's gonna tell you to disconnect and reconnect. All right.
right, there it goes. And so now I've connected to the Elite 2500 that's in this car. And what you'll see here in just one second is I'm going to go ahead and connect. And it's the same software. You don't have to open anything else. And you can actually have them both plugged in at the same time and swap between them. But I'm going to go ahead and save the map from that dash. So now we're on the Haltech side of things. The Sorry, they're both Haltech. But we're on the, the engine management side of things. And what we have to do is we have to go ahead and upgrade the firmware on this as well. So we already did the dash. The dash is on the newest firmware. So now we have to get the ECU onto the newest firmware. Sorry, there's some loud rotary thing outside making rotor noises. So this takes a minute. I have this in fast forward as well. I could have done a better job at cutting this video, but I was trying to make it pretty quick. So now our ECU is has the newest firmware and we have um so now we need to save we'll save the map that's on there you always want to save your maps as you're working all right so now what we're going to do is we're going to go over here into the um you can see right now we have the Haltech can supported dash and it says it's enabled make sure you click that so that it is enabled because it knows that it's connected. And then we're gonna go into the Haltech CAN system and under dash, we need to make sure that we have IC7 selected. If you have generic dash or IC10 or UC10 or whatever it's called, it won't work right. But now you can see, once we've enabled all this stuff, in the configuration, if you scroll down here, you'll see there's a bunch of stuff that's available resources that come from the dash. So we've got virtual outputs, we've got DPIs, DPOs, and there they are, there's all the dash inputs. So these are all AVIs and DPIs that you can use from the dash into the ECU. And these can run just about anything except for, I would say like engine critical items, things like um, triggers and whatnot um, can't run on that, uh, cam sensors can't run on that, but you can run like fuel pressure, oil pressure, Temperature sensors can run on that just fine. Um, other sensors that run fine on that. Some, I think you can run the gear selection from like a sequential gearbox, but you can't run a strain gauge, which is kind of weird. Uh, I'm not really sure why it won't let you do the strain gauge on the dash, but it doesn't. So we have to put those into the ECU as opposed to in the dash. So we're connecting back to the dash here. And now that we're back in the dash, we can see we still have all these errors. We're going to go ahead and address that now. Um, you could have addressed it earlier. It doesn't really matter that much. But basically, these errors are some bug that's currently in the dash software. And um, when you... So when you click on the show all errors, you can see what channels they were all caused in. And so what it is, is in these channel properties, there's a bunch of mins and maxes, and you need to filter out which channel it is, which I think this one is a level sender, um, not level sender, but ride height level, shock, shock travel, something like that. Um, so there it is, ride height, sensor front and rear and we're going to go ahead and see that they for whatever reason the min and maxes are wrong so you just have to go in and change that to the correct min and maxes that aren't wrong and you have to do this for the next 68 errors which is a pain in the butt but um i don't know it's a bug 
I submitted this bug report to Haltech. Haven't heard anything back. Um, but yeah, it's just a bunch of work. So here's how fast I can move the mouse. Just kidding, I fast forwarded it. But it's basically all the generic outputs have the wrong max and min, and then the ride height sensor has the wrong max and min. So. There you go. All of the errors are now gone. We're gonna go ahead and save that map. Now you can start configuring your screen. You can configure it however you want. And you just configure this very similar to how you configured things in the older ICC software, uh, where you can select what sensors and what what kinds of things you want in there. So the odometer, set it to zero. Um, yeah, save the map. So we're switching back over to the ECU now that the dash is all set up good enough. So you can see I went ahead and started this car and everything is working. Um, you can't see it in this video, but the dash is working, everything's displaying. And the ECU can now see anything that was wired into the dash and the dash can see anything that's wired into the ECU. So everything is working together and um, just getting along now. It's kind of cool um, that we have all these extra inputs we can use from the dash. Um, it's a lot of AVI that they added with that. And a lot of it is designed for doing turn signals and things like that, but you can use it all for sensors if you want. Um, if you want to use it for turn signals, go for it. The cool thing is the ECU could now see if you had the turn signal on. Not sure why you'd want that, but it could. Anyway, that's what this video is. Um, hopefully that helps answer a few questions on how to get the dash set up to work with the ECU on the newest firmware and software. And it's a, it's a new world and a new way forward here in Haltech land. So it's a little buggy right now. I found a couple other bugs like with the fuel level sender and stuff like that, but I'm um, getting those worked out in bug reports submitted to Haltech. So we can hopefully get all those bugs fixed in the next revision or so. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope this answered questions that you had. And I'll be posting more videos like this on some pretty basic functions in the near future.